post-traumatic lesion within a slight ischemic malformation revealed by hysteroscopy. This video highlights the importance of observation while performing a diagnostic hysteroscopy. A 26-year-old patient with a medical history of polycystic ovaries was referred by a colleague for hysteroscopic polypectomy in the context of a one-year primary infertility. There were no further symptoms. Less than a month before hysteroscopy, the patient did undergo a hysterosalpingography. The examination was very painful and didn't report anything besides the endometrial polyp. Our procedure was scheduled at day 9 of her menstrual cycle under anesthesia at the insistent request of the patient whose pain threshold was described to be very low. During vaginoscopy, there was mucus mixed with a slight bleeding through the cervical canal. This has caused decreased visibility as well as a slower progression of the scope. The internal cervical os was deviated to the left. The uterus was retroflected. At the entry of the uterine cavity, there seemed to be something else besides the polyp. At first sight, it looked like a second polyp, rather situated in the cervical lining. Yet, further inspection has allowed to correct the diagnosis. This rather appeared as an injury, since there was an obvious cut in the mucosa, with an increasing depth from the outside to the inside. It was then logical to wonder whether this lesion was caused by the scope while entering the uterine cavity. Yet, observing other details made this possibility appear unlikely as there were signs orienting towards a previous post-traumatic lesion. First, at the entry of the cavity, the scope rather hit the upper part of the right wall and thus hovered over the polyp. The arrow indicates this site. Second, the collision with the grasper caused instantaneous bleeding that was absent in the beginning of the procedure, thus indicating that the lesion was previous to hysteroscopy. Finally, the localization of the lesion seems in continuation with the endocervical mucosa, However, the form of this region seems somewhat marked by a broad segment alternating with constrictions. There seems to be a slight malformation, yet without significant clinical importance. The rest of the uterine cavity displays patent inflammatory signs. We proceed to the resection of the lesion.
the endometrial polyp is also removed plus an endometrial biopsy is performed. The images of hysterosal pinkography were requested. They clearly showed the ismic malformation that was not described in the report, though. They also revealed an irregular subtraction image right at the entry of the cavity that was not mentioned either in the report. During hysterosal pinkography, the blind insertion of the cannula must have injured the mucosa. The predisposing factor for this complication is likely the ismic malformation, in addition to the uterine retroflexion. A simulation has been reproduced with a play dough. The internal cervical os was deviated to the left and the uterus was retroflected. These features very likely caused the catheter to hit against the posterior wall and cut the mucosa that was partially detached. Like what we can see here. Even if the clinical importance of these findings does not seem significant, yet they need to be reported in the patient's file. Because, on the one hand, all the findings should be meticulously reported, even those that might appear insignificant. On the other hand, if the patient should ever need assisted reproduction therapy in the future, the healthcare provider would appreciate to be aware of her condition in order to double cautiousness and prevent trauma during embryo transfer. In conclusion, this case highlights the details that meticulous observation reveals during diagnostic hysteroscopy.